Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Simon Hodgson. I have the privilege of being the lead pastor at God First City Church. And uh, I, over on my side here is our creative director at City, Phil Nguane, uh, who is uh, working really hard at the moment, <laughs> especially through where we find ourselves. And uh, we just wanted to put some content together to really inspire uh, creatives in the church at this time, especially. And so we have the massive, massive honor of welcoming uh, our friend who is the global creative director of Hillsong Church uh, and uh, Cass Sandra Langton. Thank you so much, Cass, for spending some time with us today. How are you? I'm very well, Sam. It's nice to see you. Amazing. Are well, you thank well? You for doing really well. Uh, yeah, I think um, if ever there was a time for the creatives to rise up, <laughs> uh, it's oh, now. Yeah. And uh, we're already right. seeing it definitely the busiest, the busiest of departments in, uh, in a lot of churches, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I didn't think we could get any busier, but we are as well. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, so, Cass, uh, uh, I met you a a few years ago, maybe we won't say how many it's, it's been. <laughs> um, a long time, right? A, a long decade. time. Yeah, a long time ago. And, uh, but the nice thing about you and me, Cass, is we just keep looking younger and younger. So we're all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> we know. can tell ourselves anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe that um, when you were with us, you were starring in all of our Christmas spectaculars and doing all sorts of things. Do you remember? <laughs> A hundred percent. The South African Causing angles. trouble. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, and when, when I met you, you were, you were working, your primary responsibility was more on the conference side of things. I, I had the uh, privilege of doing one of my internships with you in the conferencing side of things, which was amazing. Right. Uh, and now you find yourself as the Global Creative Director of Hillsong. Um, tell us a bit about that. Did you expect to ever wind up doing <laughs> Uh, and how Maybe. did that happen and what does it all involve for you? You know, I love it so much. I can remember being maybe 20 at home and I probably think everybody had this dream and I would stand at our kitchen in Melbourne going, one day I want to do what Darlene Check does. <laughs> and I never really thought about that very much nor imagined what that would be. And I find myself um, right now doing something similar to what she did in one capacity. Um, mm. I guess we thought we meant worship leading because we would just play and muck around. But actually, I get to run the whole um, global side of our team. So that looks like pastoring and vision and responsibility for everything that we pull off from our major brands and touring and all of that sort of stuff through to our Sunday expression of church life, all of our conference creativity and things that happen there to building and pastoring a creative team in Australia of 10,000 people and then globally of many, many thousands of people. So it is a fun job that I have and it's incredible and it's diverse and it has everything from production to songwriters to film and TV to all of those sort of things underneath its wings. Um, and I get to work alongside some of the greatest people on earth. Wow. I That's think they are anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And most of them you will never know, right? Yeah, the behind phenomenal. the scenes. The behind the scenes, right? Eh? Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Full. So I don't think I ever imagined that this would be my reality. I have a business degree. I begged with my dad to let me do a theology degree. And he told me to get a real job first so that I could relate wow. to people if I ever wanted to work in church. Wow. And it actually served me very well. Mm, incredible. So I've been Full. grateful, except when it comes to preaching, and then I'm a little bit terrified. <laughs> No, you're amazing. Oh, it's, we, we love watching you preach. It's amazing. Phil, you got a question. Yeah. So obviously anyone involved in like church and all that stuff, I mean, there's some funny moments that kind of happen, um, you know, <laughs> things that go wrong or whatever. Um, do you have like any, like maybe two moments that stand out the most for you in terms of like these, um, you know, crazy moments that, you know, it seems like everything's going wrong. No, I feel like we have them every week, right? Like last week in our mega prayer night, where literally everybody is on stage and they're worshipping and it's beautiful and Brian and Bobby are praying for people across the Zoom links and like, there's so much engagement. And Jad and I are standing on the staircase. We're literally watching the platform and as we're watching, we just see the drum screen begin to wobble and then it uh, crashes literally on top of Nigel and all the musicians. And we had this moment where we looked at each other and went, should we go rescue them before it happens? We're like, no, 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 there's not enough laughter in this season. This is going to be great. <laughs> 
Um, but I think of all sorts of stuff like that. I can remember JD was on a um, United tour and he jumped on top of, he was like stage diving and jumped on top of Phil Dooley's leg and broke it. Wow. And it was, yeah, um, <laughs> it was the stand tour and Phil Dooley had to preach sitting down the whole rest of the tour. Like I feel like we've had so many moments like that from ballet dancers slipping in water fountains to all sorts of things. Like you name it, I feel like everything's gone wrong. Um, one of Taya's greatest fails is we went, hey, how about on Sunday night you lead worship from Keys? It's going to be really beautiful. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm not very good. And we're like, no, maybe you're going to do great. And she's like, okay, no problem. And so she goes to lead this really beautiful worship moment from Keys and she pushes a button and starts a whole loop that literally was um, <laughs> like a dance party on stage. When we were like, oh, I remember no, seeing no, that no. one. <laughs> Have you never said it's awesome? Well, no, we did. I, I we feel saw like, that one. Oh, you did see it? Yeah. yeah. I feel like we live in the middle of the fails and then keep going, okay, God, well, I guess you can just use this to encourage everybody. <laughs> we <laughs> are not good. perfect, but we're having a go. Yeah. Um, the next question I've got is, it seems like creativity has kind of like exploded in the church over the last couple of years. Um, and that's obviously leading you guys to obviously pioneer the WCC. Um, so why do you think this is in terms of like, you know, this creativity within the church just exploding? Mm. Yeah, we talked to our team probably about five, maybe 10 years ago about um, a creative renaissance in the church. And just so it seems really interesting that like in the Renaissance period, art had had such a, a major role to play in the church. There were so many paintings and artistic expressions everywhere, sculpture and all sorts of things. And then we hit a wall where the beauty seemed to disappear from the church. We were, wouldn't it be amazing if actually there was a revival and that a renaissance in that, that our filmmakers and our storytellers start telling gospel stories differently and we start to infiltrate the world we have the most incredible story to tell and it is full of hope and full of life. And I feel like mm. often it, it has disappeared from the public forum. And so we started to talk to our team going, let's actually trust God to stir creativity in all of us, not just songwriting and worship, but like wider than that, like stage and set design. Let's let people walk into our churches and go, oh my goodness, this surely must be the gateway of heaven. Like let's have um, Queen of Sheba moments when the lost walk in and let's actually like, reimagine how does dance fit in the church these days and how does how does film fit and how do all these different aspects fit and how can you find what you were created to bring and put it into play and i feel like since yeah. we started talking like that our team have started dreaming going oh maybe god could use me and maybe that gift in my hand isn't as random as what it looks and maybe just maybe it doesn't fit the stock standard box of church creative teams but maybe it has a place and so we've seen um artists open galleries downtown sydney and people walk past just being drawn in from the beauty and encounter god and like all sorts of different things fashion designers finding their place and songwriters starting to partner with secular artists and i feel like god is just opening up doors because um creativity seems to bypass the logical rationale get straight to your heart and it opens you up differently to the things of god yeah I wonder. And so WCC was kind of born out of that. We went, imagine artisans and creatives who find their place and begin to um, use what's in their hand to impact and change the world for good. And so maybe three years ago, we started WCC and we were shocked at like how young the crowd was and how determined they were to actually um, be engaged in a creative discussion about God. It's beautiful. That's amazing. Yeah, it's real fun. <laughs> And hopefully we'll get there uh, when the when you have your next one. We would absolutely love to. Oh, come you should to so come. It's real special. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to make yeah. that happen. Yeah. Cass, we've started using this phrase uh, around here, um, creatively courageous church. And uh, I was I was I interested like to hear. <laughs> yeah, you can you can take it. What what comes to your mind? What do you think of when when we say the phrase? Praise creatively courageous church. And I don't know about you, but I look at what we're doing creatively, and I think we have so far to go that there's so much scope for pushing boundaries and becoming innovative and trying different and new things. And yet we get so trapped in the way that we're accustomed to doing things. It's been interesting. I don't know about you guys, but in this um, COVID season, online church, like our first few weeks, what we wanted to do was just do everything that we knew to do and everything that was familiar. 
and we were scared to take risks and scared to try different things. And I think um, creativity belongs in a courageous arena. Like you actually have to trust your gut and try different things and experiment all the time and have some um, pretty decent fails in order to pioneer what's <laughs> on the other side of things. Um, the last couple of weeks, like I've cringed sometimes watching church because I can imagine it's so much better than where we get to. And then we get to Friday night and we're still in editing and still doing stuff. And our team are like, if only we had more time, we could push boundaries. If only we had. And so I think yeah. like the last couple of weeks have been a lot of conversations around how do we take more risk? How do we um, try different things? What should we be doing? How do we mess with what people know to be church and tip it on its head? And what is God requiring of us in this season? Yeah. And so I, I think I love that phrase because I feel like that's where we're living at the moment. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how are you interpreting it? What are you doing with that stuff, guys? I think for me, um, Paul, you can go it's for pretty that. similar. Like, yeah, I think it's very similar to that. Like, I think every week I've probably got a new dream or a new idea of where we can push church and what guys can experience um, in terms of, you know, it's on, it's on a digital platform. You know, what are they used to consuming? You know, it can't look traditional, like the traditional church. It's got to, right. it's got to have some, some level of like familiarity, but it's also got to be fresh at the same time. And so that has kind of been what, what's been driving me like every week, every time there's a video edit, I'm trying to add <laughs> something fresh, something new, you know, something different. Um, it really just re-engages them um, and then again, it's just about, it's about the truth, yeah. you know, just getting out. And so that's kind of been what's been driving me really is like, you know, um, you know, when you've had the traditional church in the building, you know, you're kind of limited to the four walls and, right. you know, the, the explosion of the, obviously the internet and social media. I mean, your, your content and the message of like Jesus goes across the world within a moment and it can impact right. someone's life across, you know, across the globe. And so it's, it's it's that that's kind of like been so right. exciting in the sense of that it's so important that you can reach someone you know in a moment and you know maybe they've never walked into a church building um but they can experience the love of jesus right there on their screen yeah. or device or whatever it is kind of thing so um having courage to try things that don't feel like they fit is really fun too right because i can think of a yeah. whole lot of times that we've done things that we've gone you don't even know why you're thinking it. We th thought about, oh, uh, we should drop leaves from the ceiling or we should do this sort of stuff. And people go, that seems ridiculous. And I like, oh, yeah, maybe we shouldn't do that. And then going with our gut and going, okay, let's do it. I can remember one colour, leaves dropped from the ceiling in a moment. And this girl, it ended up on a knee and she remembered a dream that she'd had where she felt like Jesus was standing there in a forest and he met her. And she wasn't a Christian at the time, but she goes, in that moment, all of a sudden she had this real revelation of God. And by the end of the night, she gave her heart to Jesus. Wow. And I feel like um, at every point in time in that creative process, we wanted to cut that moment. It was having the courage to leave it in and then actually hearing the result of it that made me go, oh, that was actually really cool. And that was God behind that idea. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, hundred percent. It feels like in so many ways, it really is the church's finest hour. Uh, none of us could have yeah. predicted or yeah. expected it, but uh, what God can actually do through this is, I think, yeah. gone far beyond what anyone could imagine, which is just incredible. And it's amazing now that people invite us into their lounge rooms, we're not inviting them into our building, right? So it just tips the table a whole different way. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your guys' beautiful. phrase of one, your uh, one house with many rooms has become many, 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 many <laughs> We get one house, many one. living rooms now. <laughs> <laughs> All over. Uh, we Cass, also I to... No, go for it. No, go for it. What were you going to say there? Um, we've been having really fun conversations about what kind of manners you need to have in order to go into other people's houses. <laughs> Do you know like how it changes how church comes to people? Because normally they come to us and say, you can do whatever you mm. want to, but now they're inviting us into their homes. So how do you display the right manners and how do you approach them the right way in order um, to be respectful and thoughtful about being in their most intimate places. Yeah. So Absolutely. it's been fun. Um, our guy in Italy, Dan, he said, um, 
we were doing a whole lot of worship and it was like real loud and like typical Hillsong, like the anthems and the big up stuff. And he goes, hey, we've been quarantined now for six weeks. It'd be really nice if you just toned it down a little bit, if it just was more acoustic, <laughs> if you were just gentle, because now we've been on our couches in our trackies for six weeks. Um, we can't deal with that anymore. It's been like, and so the conversations around what does this look like have been so interesting. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Cass, I wanted to chat a little bit about uh, the relationship that exists in churches between uh, lead pastor and creative director and what that kind of dynamic looks like, uh, the importance of that uh, and how you've navigated that for yourself in your context. Uh, and then kind of related to that, uh, have you found in your context that creative can drive content when it comes to what we're putting out or does content really drive creative? Uh, what's some of your thinking around those, those sort of issues? Yeah, right. Um I guess I'm, I'm fortunate. Our senior pastor is incredible. Like he um, is a great believer in the creative arena, a great believer in worship. Ever since he started Hillsong Church, he's traveled with a worship leader. So I'm, I'm fortunate to be in a position where he values what we bring to the table. And, and there's a lot of trust now. We've worked together for, I think I've been on staff 20 something years. So there's a decent relationship now yeah. where um, I hope he can say whatever he wants to, and I'm pretty unoffendable, um, although it has been tested over the last few weeks. <laughs> um, he, and then Bobby, is highly creative and has such a value on the creative aspect of church life. So I guess for me, um, it's, it's a pretty lovely relationship. Brian makes time for the conversation around what we're dreaming of and thinking of and 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 imagining as a team. And these days he pretty much trusts us to bring what we bring to the table. And then like, we'll tell us when we missed the mark and I appreciate his honest feedback. And then we'll make adjustments based on that. Um, and then I, I think my job actually is to continue to put myself in a position where I'm going, what is his vision for the church? What's God speaking to him about? And then how do we take that and translate it? It's not Cass Langton pushing, pushing Cass Langton's bandwagon. It's actually, I am um, a creative pastor at Hillsong Church. Therefore, that means my office of creative pastor brings something to the table to support what God's put in his hand and his heart for this season. And I think when we start to marry those two things together, then it's a really beautiful dynamic. I hope that he would think I'm one of his biggest cheerleaders and encouragers. I'm one of the ones that go, you know what, leave that with us. We'll get it done. We'll work out how to make that happen. And my job is to build a thriving, flourishing, creative team that are grounded in God, secure in their gifting, offer real open-handedly their creativity, but aren't so precious that it has to be used. Mm. And so, like, I think that's where we sit. I've been talking to our team at the moment, because obviously it's a real, probably every creative director finds this, but I find myself in a season where there's a handful of people that are getting used all the time and probably overused, and they're working 24-7, we're delivering Sunday morning services at 3 a.m. on Saturday night because that's when we finally get the edits done. And then there's a whole team of people who actually in this season are home and quiet and don't have anything to do. And everything that was familiar for them, they're now not doing. They're not playing on a Sunday. They're not serving. They're not setting the stage. And so they're trying to work out what to do with themselves. And so, like, I've been literally going, oh, God, how do I explain this? And I started thinking about, like, you know, Abraham and Isaac, when Abraham was asked to sacrifice Isaac and he climbs a hill with his gift and his future and his opportunity and he actually puts Isaac on the altar. And I kind of said to our team in this season, I feel like maybe God has given us a season where he's asking us to put our gifts and our talents and the things that look like our opportunity on the altar. And... um instead of bringing a sacrifice of praise we're actually learning about praise in the sacrifice of the season and so like i think we've been thinking about that stuff as a team and then how to navigate the reality of what is required and then in in terms of this creative drive content or content drive creativity it's both and yeah. it's um I guess it depends on what you're working at at any point in time it depends on where you find yourself who you're working with um like this weekend for us is Mother's Day. And so we're working with Bobby and she's highly creative and, and she's working out her message. But at the same time, she's kind of saying, well, um, what have you guys got in your hand? And show me what you've got and I'll show you what I've mm. got. Let's let's marry this together. Um, other times, Brian will go, hey, I've got an idea about this and I, I want it to be like this. And um, 
or and then there'll be other times where we go hey have you thought about this and can we show you a great pitch for something and what do you think if we head this way so like I don't know that we have a um what comes first chicken or the egg it all just works together <laughs> yeah does that answer your question yeah that's awesome it's so beautiful so <laughs> so so important I think for uh, for this dynamic uh Saul you had something else about um about those outside um yeah um what's one thing you would wish those outside of the church would know about creativity within the church hmm. what do i wish they know yeah um yeah am i, am I allowed to quote people <laughs> go for it yeah <laughs> um well i listened to kanye talk about what he does and how um he says, like, I've been God's greatest kept gift or greatest kept secret or like he talks about what he's doing as being so unique. And I, I wish people like him realise that he stands on the shoulders of a rich legacy of a singing people. Like, I, I don't think that people who come to know God, they, they um, stand on the shoulders of a legacy. Like I think of Israel and a singing God and a God who rejoiced over them with singing. Like we only have our creativity because God was a creative God first, because God was a singing God first, because he authors song. And I feel like I wish they knew that. And I wish that they realised, and, and I think inside the church, I wish we realised that we have licence to be more creative than what we can ever begin to imagine and that we don't have to be boxed in by what we knew. And therefore, I, I wish that they would see that. But sometimes I think we get so accustomed to playing it safe so um, familiar with our own language that we don't reimagine and we don't reinterpret and we don't bring the message for a new generation like we should. Sure, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that really speaks into being a, a creatively courageous church to really push those boundaries uh, for those on yeah. the outside to see what is, what is possible and to kind of push and dream and uh, create. <laughs> I've got one last question for you uh, uh, as we kind of wrap this up. And... Uh, I'm interested to find out what is it that you think God is saying to humanity uh, at this point in time? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a little question, hey, Simon. <laughs> um, okay. What does Castellation what does Castellation think? I um I remember being so overwhelmed, maybe the first Sunday that we were at home. And I, I pulled out my Bible and I went, God, what are we meant to do with this season? And what are you saying to us? And how do we imagine and interpret it? And what is this? And I read the Passover story. And I loved it because I feel like um, Israel got pushed into houses as God protected them from the angel of death. And, and as they went into homes, they ate meals around the table. They were reminded of the blood on the doorposts and his, his ability to save and rescue them. And I guess I've been thinking lots about that whole Passover account and what it means for us, because I feel like God's driven us into our homes and he's driven us around our tables and into radical acts of hospitality with the people who are most dear to us. And I think he's trying to remind us that there is hope in this season, that we can become what he imagines that we will become. I think he has um, put us in a position where every idol that we have wanted to lean on our health, our wealth, our fitness, our security and our jobs, all that stuff, it's all been stripped away. And particularly like in our creative industry, I've watched so many of our own team lose their jobs and find themselves in desperate positions. And not that God's caused it, but I think he's used it to break all of the stuff that we rely on so much instead of him. And he shifted our focus back to who he is. And I've just watched in our team, people become so desperate for, um, those wilderness experiences where they're face to face with God on mountaintops, where he speaks to them like he spoke to Moses, where they reflect his glory, where they become image bearers in the purest sense, not like golden calves, but actually like um, people who have met with God. And so I feel like in this season, he's just given us an opportunity to step aside, to take time out. I don't know about you, but our church forever we said, if only we could have a sabbatical, if only we could have three months, if only we could just stop the ship for a second, if only we could hear what God's saying. And I think we find ourselves in a real unique season where God is speaking and he's drawing us into real intimacy with him. And um, creativity isn't for any other purpose except um, to glorify God. 
and to use what he's given us the most beautiful ways. Our families have become places of sanctuaries, I hope, for God to reveal his glory, where he's started to work on us and develop fruits of the spirit in us as we've developed patience and perseverance and all of the things that we don't necessarily want um, to cultivate, but we're forced to as we're in close confines with each other. And so I wonder if, if that's what he's saying to us. Um, at the start of the year, I talked to our team about a year worth framing. I talked about 2020 being the type of year where you have two options. You can either look for, um, and we're, we're meant to look for the fingerprints of God. And you either find it as a crime scene where you stand there and go, God, what happened this year? What have you done? Like, I can't believe where we find ourselves, um, which is like murder mysteries. Or alternatively, the better way is what um, archaeologists have said is where you find fingerprints on artwork and you find the fingerprints that actually display um, a master craftsman at work creating beauty. And they say that Leonardo da Vinci had his fingerprints on certain things that he painted and it's increased the value of those artworks exponentially. And so I encouraged our team at the start of the year to look for the fingerprints of God in a way that it reveals beauty in our lives being his artwork and his masterpiece. I talked to them about how we were calling our year the year of a meal, a year of radical hospitality around tables, and we were going to have more people in our home this year. Anyway, fast forward, that was January when I talked to our team, and in March we find ourselves like in lockdown, and all of our creative team started writing things like, I guess this is the year without a name, it's a year that has no purpose, it's the year where maybe God wasn't actually up to what we thought he was. And I read the most interesting thing about um, artists in the 18th century and 19th century. They did what they called varnishing day and they turned up at art galleries with um, tins of varnish to finish off artworks and they hung them on the wall. And it was a sign that the artwork was finished. And then um, Joseph Turner, who's a famous British romantic painter, he turned up instead of turning up with a varnishing tin, he turned up with paints. And when his, pa his painting was hung on the wall, he started to repaint it. And I just got the picture that that's kind of 2020 for our team. It's not varnishing day yet. It's, um, I don't think God's finished with this year. I don't think COVID took him by surprise. I don't think this season has surprised him at all. And I think he intends to create artwork out of our life if we don't seal it off and call it done. And so I think the encouragement in this year is actually to look for God at work, find his fingerprints and have your eyes open to his majesty and beauty to create um incredible things in the exchange beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning like I, I i think he is at work beyond what we can begin to imagine this year and he has intention and plans for it and he intends for us to emerge out this season stronger to rebuild cities and rebuild families and craft um incredible testaments to his grace and his goodness that's what i think i think we've been praying wow. for revival for a long time and this is um the sparks of it Hmm. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a, a really, really <laughs> amazing like way to, something like that. That's an incredible way to end up. That's, I want to say thank you to you and your team and your church has uh, for, for always pushing the boundaries, for uh, always inspiring so many thousands and thousands of us around the world. We, we look to you and we're so inspired by you. Our faith is always stirred by you guys. And so uh, thanks for, for pushing on and, and carrying on and uh, in, in good times and difficult times, you know, uh, Hillsong is just a, one of those churches that we all look to and uh, we're so Thank inspired you. by you guys. Our faith is always so stirred by you guys. And, uh, you know, this, this thing of being hope bringers is, is where we are this year, also beginning of the year, uh, we spoke about us being hope bringers. Uh, and that's certainly what you are to so many thousands and thousands of people all over the globe. And so thank you so much for that. Thank, uh, you. thank you so much for your time. That was so much fun. Pleasure. And, um, yeah, we hope hopefully uh, soon we can be there. We can see you at the conference. And uh, but for now, please do send all our love to everybody that side. Thanks for having me. Oh, cheers, awesome. Cheers.